Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the recent observations and recent somewhat unusual discoveries coming from a very intriguing star system that basically looks like this. An extremely unique star system discovered a while back that's now referred to as Apep, named after the mortal enemy of the god Ra in the Egyptian mythology. But one of the main reasons this star became very famous in 2010s is because of what potentially might happen to this star system in the next few thousands of years. As of 2025, this is probably the best progenitor candidate for what's known as a gamma ray burst. A really powerful explosion that produces enormous amount of power, with all of this power concentrated in an extremely compact jet. And naturally, if such a jet is pointed toward planet Earth, it does have a chance to possibly cause an extinction event. But here, based on the observations from the star, it was pretty quickly established that even if the gamma ray burst is produced, it's unlikely to be headed toward us. Nevertheless, this star, along with the Eta Carina NWR104, has officially become the possible future gamma ray burst progenitor, with a slight chance of maybe affecting Earth. But extremely recently, in July of 2025, researchers observed this star with a James Webb, discovering a few more things about it, and learning a few more things about the star system, which has always kind of surprised everyone. Which means that we have to talk about this star system once again. And really because this is not just some kind of a distant celestial object, this is a cosmic marvel. It kind of challenges our understanding of stellar evolution, and potentially offers critical insights into some of the most powerful phenomena such as the gamma ray bursts. But first, let's talk about what we know so far and what sort of a star system this is. And to begin, well, this is not very close to us. It's approximately 8,000 light years away from Earth and seems to be a triple star system. But when this star system was observed in 2016, because of its bizarre appearance and because of its similarity to some kind of a snake, it eventually received a nomenclature of Apep, the Egyptian snake god. But in this case, this shape is just a vast complex of stellar wind and cosmic dust, with a shape itself somewhat similar to another star we recently discussed, known for producing very bizarre shells. Here we're talking about WR140, the Wolf Rea system we've discussed recently in one of the videos in the description. And well, as you can imagine, this is also a Wolf Rea system, specifically a Wolf Rea binary that also contains a third hot supergiant orbiting in the north. And just as a reminder, Wolf Rea stars represent a very dramatic stage in the life cycle of a massive star, usually right before they explode as supernova. And this is when a lot of stars violently shed their outer shells, leaving behind exposed cores that then generally go supernova. And the stage is characterized by very powerful streams of gas and stellar wind that, as we've learned recently, seems to enrich the entire galaxy in a lot of dust and a lot of complex molecules. That's actually from that previous video from just a few months back that you can find in the description. But this is also an extremely brief stage, usually only lasting for hundreds of years or sometimes a few millennia. But unlike other Wolf Rea stars, APAP is particularly interesting. And that's because here we have two classical Wolf Rea stars orbiting one another. One of them is what's known as the carbon sequence subtype, and one of them is a nitrogen sequence subtype, making this one of the few known cases of a classical Wolf Rea binary system. But obviously, the most remarkable feature of the system is how it looks. It seems to contain a vast complex of stellar wind and cosmic dust that seems to surround the system and expands in every direction, with the material forming what's known as a pinwheel shape, very similar to other pinwheels we've discussed previously. And once again, this is super important for the entire galaxy because these are dust-producing factories. As a matter of fact, some of the previous studies, including the one in the description, have definitively shown that a lot of this dust seems to be more or less organic in nature, and quite a lot of it is then very likely responsible for enriching new stars and eventually causing the formation of planets enriched in organic materials. And there is a very high chance that something very similar to this potentially cause the formation of planet Earth, eventually enriching it in organic matter. But in order to form this dust and in order to create all of these complex organic molecules, this involves an extremely powerful process, with super powerful stellar winds coming from both stars, clashing with each other, 
creating a lot of density and a lot of compression, which forces a lot of these elements to initiate complex chemical reactions, resulting in the production of a lot of compounds we very often associate with organic molecules. And this is very likely how some of the earliest carbon dust in the entire universe was created as well. As a matter of fact, most of the stuff inside of us was very likely formed in a similar way. But it's the orbital motion of the stars that then wraps all of this dust into this spiral shape and sprinkles it across the galaxy. With most of this gas then moving at very high velocities, usually hundreds of kilometers per second, or approximately 1% of the speed of light. But in this system some of this dust seems to move much slower, which indicates that at least one of the components in the system seems to be rotating rapidly. So fast as a matter of fact that its surface gravity seems to be balanced with the outward centrifugal force, which basically results in slightly different stellar winds on the equator compared to the polar regions. We have a lot of fast winds coming from the poles, but much slower winds coming from the equator. And it's the interaction with these slower winds that then creates this very unique pinwheel shape. But compared to other pinwheels, this one is just a little bit different. And that's because, as I mentioned, this is a unique binary system. Instead of one powerful star dominating weaker companion, here APAP features very similar stars with near equal strength of winds, resulting in the dust being spread out in a very wide cone of dispersion. But some of the features of this shape were still difficult to explain, and so these new observations from the James Webb Space Telescope potentially provide us with some answers. And well, first of all, here's what this new image looks like. In my opinion, this is even more beautiful and more mysterious. But we now have a potential answer for why this shape is so bizarre. It's probably because of that third star. The third hot supergiant that orbits the central binary seems to have dramatic effects on changing the shape even though it orbits 1700 astronomical units away from the system. Here a single period is approximately 10,000 years. And at first researchers were not certain if that third star was even in orbit or if it was just passing nearby and seemed to be in the same location completely by accident. But the James Webb Space Telescope equipped with its very powerful infrared camera was able to provide a lot more detailed data. And well, the first observation is that there seem to be three more distinct dust shells that become visible if you zoom out of the system, and that also seem to be cooler and fainter. But they're spaced perfectly evenly against the background of swirling dust. But there's also something else in this shape that only became visible to the James Webb. Here this new data revealed a distinct bite taken out of this dust shell. And this type of a bizarre carving usually occurs where the wind of the third star interacts with the dust from two other stars. In essence conclusively proving that the third star is physically bound to the inner system and confirming this as a triple star system. Otherwise we would not be seeing these bizarre deformations that seem to be relatively regular. But these new observations also suggest that the star is probably a little bit farther away than we initially thought. Not by much, but probably by a few hundred light years. And the shell that you see in this image seems to have been created in the last 700 years, with this dust shell expanding every single year. This was determined using a computer model that allowed for very precise decoding of what seems to be happening inside. And so because they are much farther away, this implies that the stars are extraordinarily bright. But also very likely challenges the initial claim that one of the stars is rapidly rotating. Which of course means that we still have so much to learn about these stars and about their evolution, especially because these very strange nebula seem to be indeed crucial for the evolution of galaxies and the formation of planets. But this star seems to be the most important discovered so far, because the age of the dust around it is way way older. That previous shelled star we discussed a few weeks ago only shows us dust that's just over 100 years old. But in this image we see dust that's at least 700 years old, with the dust also exhibiting something we've never seen before. Destruction of the dust by a third companion in orbit around the central binary. And so because these stars have now been established to be crucial for the enrichment of planetary systems and possibly the formation of complex planets, these new observations and these new studies take us just a little bit closer in helping us understand how terrestrial planets seem to form, what life needs on those planets in order to thrive, and where all of this potentially started. But if you'd like to learn more about this, check out the study by Ryan White and the team you see here in the description below.
And so on that note, that's pretty much what I wanted to mention. Prior to the observations by James Webb, a lot of these wolf ray stars were actually quite mysterious and seemed to produce effects we just could not explain. But because of these new infrared observations, and because of several new studies based on the observations of infrared emissions, in just the last five years we've gained a lot of understanding of what seems to be happening here, highlighting the importance of studying these stars and their importance when it comes to the evolution of the entire galaxy. But until future studies, or until we learn something else about one of these bizarre objects, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out previous videos on a similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. Or maybe support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.